So Overflow Works is a direct marketing company that kind of specializes in making the phone ring, generating leads for the mortgage industry. I've got a long history of doing this. So we've got a couple slides up just showing our production facilities. So we have, you know, Xerox lasers and folders and inserters and a big mail truck that delivers mail to the post office every day. I think that photo in the bottom right corner is about you know, about 50,000 pieces of mail getting ready to go to the post office. So, um, you know, kind of full service direct marketing. We do creative data tracking, um, ROI, you know, analysis, um, email marketing, social media, digital. But our primary focus is, is printing of direct mail. Awesome. Well, we're excited to hear a little bit about some of the uh, marketing tactics and strategies that you're doing to uh, increased response and closing ratios on uh, mortgage direct mail and internet leads. Uh, we also have with us the amazing Dale Vermillion, 33-year industry veteran, 21-year speaker. Many of you have heard of him. Uh, he's been a keynote speaker at over 2,500 seminars and events. He's trained over a million individuals and over 400 lenders. He's maybe trained some of your individual staff or maybe he's trained you for crying out loud. He's been around the industry for so long. He's an author, he's the creator of the Elite Mortgage Champion Exclusive Training System and is an exclusive training partner with LendingTree. And uh, some of you probably read, uh, read his articles. He's a, he's a great friend and a true expert in learning how to be a true professional in the sales world and uh, convert those leads to help people to do what it is that they wanna do. Thanks for joining us today, Dale. David, it's great to be here with you guys. Appreciate it so much. And uh, I feel old after all that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was trying to say it gently, but I uh, appreciate <laughs> hearing your expertise with this. Um, you know, I, I want to do a quick survey before we jump in here because I know that the, uh, the content today can go in a lot of different directions based upon who's here. So uh, for those of you that uh, are joining us here live, go ahead and cast your vote on the poll. Uh, Jeff and Dale, you won't be able to see the poll or you won't be able to vote, but for all of the participants, go ahead and cast your vote so we have an idea of who's with us today, and then we can tailor the content to the live participants. So uh, appreciate everybody voting. We've got about uh, 20, 30 more people that need to vote. Cast your vote quickly. You just click on the screen and you should have access to uh, the polling feature. Keep the poll open for about 20 more seconds. So cast your vote quickly so we can get to the presentation and that'll really help our panelists today. All right, thanks everybody. A Couple more people, cast your vote. Close it up in 10, nine, the bell's gonna go off, seven, six, come on, you can get it in. Hey, quit, quit thinking around with your email and your Blackberry. Come on, brother, get back to the screen. All right, we got uh, a good amount of people that ended up voting. So uh, we got a good variety of uh, people here, folks. We've got uh, some that just have a few loan officers taking leads. And uh, we've also got some big dogs that have a pretty large office, Jeff and Dale. So let's go ahead and jump right into the presentation and uh, we'll uh, bring some value to everybody that showed up. So here's what I did is I went to Dale and Jeff and I said, hey, you know, we want to bring the top 10 strategies and tactics to increase closing ratios on leads, specifically direct mail and Internet leads. Uh, Jeff uh, had about six. I told him, hey, I only need five, man. Give me your best five. And so he whacked one at the very end. So we, we got five from Jeff and five from, from uh, Dale. So let's go ahead and just jump in, Jeff. And we're going to talk about the number one strategy that you're using right now is this whole live lookup. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, so after mailing, you know, hundreds of millions of direct mail letters and listening to thousands of phone calls from my own loan officers back in 2007 and currently my, my clients phone calls because we record all our phone calls to listen to them it, it always annoyed me that mortgage companies loan officers would answer a call off direct mail and the first question was can you give me your address and and invariably the prospect would say you just mailed me a letter you don't have my address so for companies that don't have a CRM with all the data loaded into the back end um, with a pin number or unique customer ID number, this system was very helpful, but we took it a step further. So every letter we print and mail has a personalized PIN number. And with that PIN number, you can take it over to our website and do a full property lookup um, that's gonna tell you a whole bunch of information about the borrower without having to ask the borrower 10 questions you know, off the beginning of the phone call. So I just showed a little FHA letter, now I'm showing a VA letter you know, this VA letter went to people that had adjustable rate, you know, VA loans. Um, 
and it's got a, a unique PIN number on every letter. So you go over to our website, you have that website open when they call you, you put in the PIN number, and instantly the first thing you're gonna see with the bar on the phone is a Google Maps picture of their house. So this gives you this pretty nice house down in Newport Beach. Property taxes are $27,000 a year, so a real nice house. So you could talk about the nice boat they have at their dock. You could talk about their swimming pool. Sometimes you can see the neighborhood. So a picture of their house, square footage, everything you'd normally get from title. They've got a swimming pool, you know, what the loan amount was, uh, when the last loan day was. Pretty quickly, you can get over to the open lien report. And what's exciting about this is it tells you all the liens against the property. So this guy's got a $974,000 conventional loan. He's making his payments to Chase. He opened his loan, it looks like October of 03. Um, because this is an adjustable rate loan, you're gonna get the index, the margin, when the loan goes adjustable. So here's a picture of everything about this, this person before you even had to ask one question mm -hmm. the borrower. It also tells you, of course, who's on title, if it's husband, wife, legal, property address. So this open lien report is pretty valuable. Um, I think the next slide, Dave, might be, um, did we put the comparable sales in there? We do. Uh, I don't think one, we did. So there's one other screen that shows the most recent six homes that sold in their market area. So it gives you a real good idea of value of the home. And everybody wants to know, you know, how much equity is in the home to kind of see what direction you're going to take the caller and what their options are for refinancing and saving and paying off debt. So we've uh, tested this for about a year now. We spent about $30,000 building it. And the clients that are using this, that are training the loan officers how to use it, you know, love it. And, and this information could be pulled over into like a Velocify CRM. Right now, it's not currently linked with Velocify, but certainly it, it could be. That's kind of the next step that we're working on. But just gives uh, the loan officers a lot to talk about with the borrower. So I'm pretty excited about this system. We've seen this double closing ratios from, you know, clients that are taking hundreds of inbound calls every month from direct mail. We can also put internet leads into this system and score them and give you PIN numbers to look up the internet lead before you outbound call them. So that so was kind of the top one. Quick question, Jeff, from the participants. A great question is, is that do you have to have a PIN number to utilize this system or can you enter in an address as well? This system is built to be used with our direct mail with a PIN number. Um, I imagine we could set this up to just drop in the address and give somebody access to look something up with an address, but it was kind of designed for people doing direct mail with us, or they send us their internet leads and we upload them and assign a PIN number so that you have access to this report on every call before you call the internet lead, or more importantly, with that incoming direct mail call while you're on the phone with the borrower, you have all this information at your fingertips. You know, the only questions you have to ask is income and, and credit score, um, you know, to move forward with, I guess, a full kind of loan proposal, so. Great. Well, let's move on to the next uh, the next strategy, and, and this really starts out with this report that you have from uh, iLeads regarding the, the percentage of uh, funding rates on internet leads. Talk a little bit more about the opportunity here. Yeah, so a friend of mine, the owner of iLeads, Drew, um, he ran this report at LeadsCon in Las Vegas, which I was up there a couple months ago, and he, he did this presentation that basically said he studied 2.3 million mortgage internet leads that were generated last year, and only 5% of them turned into a funded loan over a nine month period. Now, those 2.3 million internet leads were sold to at least three companies, and, and probably 20 or 30 companies. So this 5% closing ratio is all the mortgage companies combined that are calling these internet leads. So that means 95% of all you know mortgage leads never turn into a funded loan. Now, um, big disclaimer, this does not include LendingTree leads because LendingTree didn't participate in the study. So it was 2.3 million mortgage internet leads outside of LendingTree, 5% close ratio. So that might be five companies closing 1%. Um, and here's the amount of loans funded off these leads, $18 billion in conventional loans, 4 billion FHA, 3 billion VA. Uh, and then the top states where the most loans were funded, obviously California being the biggest. So the big thing here on this presentation is 5% um, of, of, of mortgage internet leads turn into a funded loan. So there's 95% that don't. So let's talk about how you're converting some of those with uh, the second strategy you provided, Jeff, on 
mailing your internet leads. Talk about how this works. So something kind of counterintuitive to a mortgage person who's buying a bunch of mortgage internet leads, why would I spend the money on postage direct mailing my internet leads when I, I'm already calling them and I'm emailing them? And the simple answer is you're only getting a hold of 40 or 50% of those leads. So we reach out with a direct mail letter and because these people have raised their hands saying they're interested in getting a mortgage, instead of getting a 0.3 response rate, 30 calls on 10,000 letters is a pretty good national average on direct mail. We mail 10,000 of these letters, we get 300 phone calls, a 3% response. And we've done that multiple times. So to mail a letter to your internet leads um, with a message like this, we're contacting you regarding your online mortgage inquiry. We've tried to call you, we've tried to email you. You're not responding, so we figured we'd mail you this letter. It's amazing how many people will get the letter in the mail and call you, and now you're on the phone with them, and it becomes a pretty warm lead. So um, we've been talking this uh, idea up to some different clients and had three or four of them take us up on it, and they're seeing phenomenal response rates on their, on their direct mail, mailing their own internet leads. We have about 200,000 older aged internet leads in our office that we can mail to and provide uh, the whole of the data to. But, um, so that's, here's an example, a second example of a letter that's a little more expensive. It's a handwritten envelope with a live stamp. So this is kind of made to be uh, more personal from your loan officer. So we might on the variable letter, put your logo on this card that goes in this little envelope and say, hey, you know, last week you applied for a mortgage loan through LendingTree. We're trying to reach you with phone calls and emails, but decide to reach out to you with this letter. And whoever you give that internet lead to, we can personalize the letter with the loan officer that's been calling them, that's been emailing them. So now they've sent a personal card hand address, so it makes you stand out from the other 20 calls they're getting from other lenders on internet leads. So it just makes you stand out a little bit. Great. Well, let's go to number three. Now, this one may sound a little bit simple, but you've, uh, you've crushed it with this, and you've had a lot of customers that have done the same thing. Talk about what it means to put an expiration date on leads. Yeah, so I saw a big increase in my closing ratio. I think we were closing 8% of our incoming calls from direct mail, turning them into funded loans when I owned my mortgage company. And when I started taking the incoming calls and saying, listen, you only have one week with that incoming call to get a social security number and send out a loan quote, or I'm taking the lead away, my closing ratio went from 8% to 10%. And I made an additional million dollars a year from increasing my closing ratio by 2%, and this was a big one. So loan officers do not like to have leads taken away from them. So when you put an expiration date on the lead, whether it's a week or two weeks or 30 days, if they feel like they're gonna lose the lead, they do not wanna be embarrassed by the loan officer sitting next to them closing that deal where they said the lead was no good. So this was a big increase in my closing ratio, just kinda having a rework team putting an expiration date on leads. Great, I'm gonna have Dale jump in here. Dale, if you wouldn't mind just talking a little bit about uh, the value of um, maybe that competitive spirit in a, uh, in a sales team, what do you think about this idea of expiration dates on leads? Well, frankly, David, I think it's absolutely critical um, that, um, that each of the lenders out there really has a program like this. Look, with, with all the companies I work with on direct mail, on internet leads, aggregate leads, one of the things that we not only promote is having an expiration, but in addition to that, always have a second call on every single lead that you have. If you do not disposition that out as a sale, if, if by the time that loan officer is done with it on that first call, they've not sold that deal yet, they qualify for something, and that borrower is not given a decision, the recommendation is always give it a second look with a second loan officer. Sometimes it's just a different personality, or maybe it's just a different voice tone, or maybe it's just a different mannerism that will get the borrower to move forward. The bottom line is expiration should always be there. I actually recommend 48 to 72 hours. I even go a little tighter than that one-week time frame because – those leads can, can really, over a 72 hour period, can really go stale. And then once that 72 hours up, if they have gotten a hold of them and not sold the deal, give it to a second person, whether that's a manager call, that's following up on it, or another loan officer. You know, as Jeff said, loan officers love to sell other loan officers deals. That's great. Well, I'm gonna have uh, Jeff and Dale talk about this next strategy as well, because this is kind of uh, maybe a wake up call to some of the uh, owners and, and managers and organizations out there that are on tonight's uh, or today's presentation. Jeff, talk a little bit more about the train and let go principle. 
you know, it was amazing to me. I would give a hundred leads to <clears throat> every loan officer per month off direct mail calls. And, you know, John would close 19 loans and Jack was closing one. And, and Jack was always complaining that the leads were no good. And he was getting the same leads John was getting. And the closing ratio, if you don't cut out the people that can't close at 5% or better on direct mail calls, we're talking 100 to $200 phone calls. If, if you don't get rid of the people, you will go broke. They will, they will take your leads and they'll really hurt your profitability. So, I mean, everybody's watching or, or thinks they're watching closing ratios. But, you know, I used to have kind of, if you're not closing 5% of your incoming calls, you got to go. And there's certain personalities that can close these loans over the phone from incoming direct mail calls or outbound internet leads. Sometimes the best loan officers that work off referral that do 10 loans a month from their realtor referring them all this purchase business, sometimes those guys are the worst on the incoming calls because they're so used to having warm referred leads that they have a hard time building rapport and selling the deal. I mean, these people have to be sold. You know, your interest rate, your fees, they're calling two or three different companies. You got to stand out. So I always recommend it, you know, disc profiles to make sure you find the personalities that, that can warm up, build rapport and close. It's so important in a call center environment. Totally different person than the self-gen loan officer out there doing 10 purchase loans a month with realtors and financial planners and accountants referring them business. So having that cut line is, uh, is pretty important. Yeah, well, we're going to talk with Dale in just a moment here, a little bit more about leadership. But Dale, talk about, um, from a leadership standpoint, uh, what should be um, like creating the culture of winners. You know, when you have a bunch of winners that are closing and are getting great results, sometimes those guys that are not doing such a great job, those can be the negative Nellies and be kind of, you know, ruffling the feathers or maybe bringing some negativity into your team. Any thoughts on that? Well, look, the, the key to success on a sales floor is simply one word, it's energy. If you don't have a high energy environment with salespeople that are highly motivated, they're not going to convert at high levels, bottom line. So when Jeff talks about cutting people out who aren't converting at certain levels, first you train them. But if you can't train them up to get there, the number one thing that I always recommend to uh, my clients when hiring new loan officers, number one, quit hiring all the experienced guys, hire people off the street. You can train up from the ground up the way you want to. They're usually better loan officers at the end of the day and they have more loyalty. But secondarily, make sure that when you hand them leads, keep a leash on those leads. Make sure you're managing the leads, not managing the people, and working with them on how to be the best they can in converting that. Because the answer usually is not more leads to more success. It's usually better conversion to more success. In fact, the answer is never just buying more leads. You want to make sure you're putting your best loan officers in front of them. If there's a high energy environment with highly trained people that know how to handle those leads properly, you're going to see great conversion rates. And you really are going to see the best results. I, I see clients all the time that spend a million, two million, three million dollars per year on marketing leads. When asked them the question, "How much are you training, spending on training those people?" and their answer is, "Well, we don't really have a training budget." My response is, "Okay, so you're spending three million dollars on leads to people who aren't trained to convert them. Spend some of your money and time out of your marketing budget on making sure these guys can do a good job with it." That's like my dad used to say: "It's like buying apples for a dime and selling them for a nickel and trying to make it up on volume." You know, there you go. That's exactly right. <laughs> All right, Jeff, give us number five here. Letter from the president. So unfortunately, this was my highest response direct mail letter I ever did. And what it was is mailing a letter to the people that called my mortgage company um, asking to get a loan. So let's say I got a thousand calls a month when I was closing 80 loans off marketing, off incoming direct mail calls. I would mail a thousand of these letters. And it was kind of sad. I would get 100 phone calls, a 10% response of people saying, hey, I called your company to get a mortgage loan, and your loan officer never called me back. So I, I called this the letter from the president, and I used to get all the funny uh, phone calls. Is your name really Jeff Bush? Are you the president? You know. So it was the letter from the president. I used to just mail this letter. I wanted to make sure my loan officers were following up with the people that called in. Now, a lot of times, those, those people that responded to this letter, you know, they'd call and say, hey, your loan officer never called me back. I'd go look at the credit report, and the guy had a 495 FICO score. So I know why my loan officer didn't call him back. But the fact that my loan officers knew this letter was going out, and if I got a call from their borrower saying that they never got a call back, I'd go address them. And it kind of stepped everybody up that this little, this was a 1,000 letters a month. It cost me $500 a month to mail it. And I would talk to or get emails from 100 people. And this is not the exact letter, I, uh, but it's very close, very simple 
And like I said, just your sales team knowing that you're following up with these leads, asking for, it's almost like surveying your, your borrowers that called in um, and, and just getting a better feel for it. It makes everybody step up a little bit. Great. So just as a recap, Jeff's was uh, use the lookup number, use the pin number strategy. That's going to be a great way to close, uh, increase your closing ratio. We also had uh, mailing your internet leads was number two. Number three was putting an expiration date on leads. Number four was uh, train or let go uh, of the people that are not closing the, the bottom 10%. And number five was use a letter from the president. So Jeff, as we wrap up this first portion on the marketing aspect, uh, talk a little bit more about some of the numbers that you've been able to produce for some of your clients. So these are reports that show direct mail that we did, how many pieces mailed, the total cost, how many responses, how many funded, average loan amount, cost per lead. So it's important to be able to access all this information. I mean, it's easy to, to use a toll-free number and say I mailed you know, 100,000 letters and I got, you know, 500 phone calls, but to follow my way through closings. So if you look at the totals, this is some direct mail that we did in the fourth quarter of last year for a big national lender. They mailed 800,000 letters, spent 440 grand. Their average response at 0.6 response rate, you know, number of calls, fundings, average loan amount. So you can see bottom right corner is all that really matters at $1,254 per funded loan. I know mortgage companies that are spending 500 bucks a loan and they're real proud of it, but they might only be doing 20 loans a month. When you get up into funding thousands of loans, it's probably going to go up a little bit. Um, I know mortgage companies that are spending $3,000 per funded loan. So that $1,254, a half a point to get a loan funded off direct mail is a pretty good number you can be profitable at. Great. If you're making two points on a loan.